Welcome to Get Offset. My name is Emily and I am afraid of MIDI devices. I don't really understand MIDI, but I'm trying to learn. So when Arturia offered to send me the Keylab Essentials 49 Mark III MIDI controller, which is a 49 key MIDI controller, uh, that's at a pretty reasonable price point. I, I said, yeah, but with the understanding that there were some things I was going to need to learn. And uh, yeah, I do need to learn them. So let's take a look at Studio One and figure out how to set this up. Because frankly, um, when I was trying to set it up, I came across a weird block with the computer. I installed the MIDI Control Center. I installed the Arturia Software Center. Um, and then when I got to the last page about how to connect it to your DAW, and I saw there are these integration scripts for Bitwig, Cubase, FL Studios, Ableton Live, and Logic, but not for Studio One. So, okay, um, I Googled it, and here is the answer I found, and I'm gonna to explain to you why that's not the right answer. So if I was gonna to go to Studio One, and I wanted to add a MIDI controller, I'm going to go to Options. Click on Options, you see my existing things, some are not connected, like Ghostwriter and Fader Port 8 are not connected. Um, my IO Station 24C is connected. So I'm gonna to go to Add. And what everything said was to go to Mackie and add a control center from Mackie. Sure, so I'm gonna do this and I'm going to show you the problem that I had with this. So I'm gonna have a send and receive to the essential MIDI. I'm gonna hit okay. So now it's here as control center. So if I open up, I can select control and I mean that made a noise, but it also did something else, didn't it? And I know you can't hear the computer audio. I'm sorry about that. It's just not 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 how I'm set up right now. I just wanted to show I wanted to show you the process, not necessarily hear the sounds. But you saw that um, some of the keys have obviously been assigned to hotkeys. There's one. So this D flat, I think, I click it and you can see it moving on the screen and then it disappears. So yes, obviously it's assigned to hotkeys. I even went into the hotkeys, try to figure out what was going on. But, uh, so I did that by going to keyboard shortcuts. I picked something that didn't have a script view already and I started hitting these keys that were doing things. And uh, if I, <laughs> normally, if I have a normal key, so if I, on my normal keyboard, hit space, it'll show up. So I don't actually know what's happening is, is the thing. And yeah, so maybe you could like get away with this, like, okay, well, I'm gonna play a chord. And it's fine. But the problem is sometimes, and for some reason it's not doing it right now, um, occasionally you'll hit a key that will close the whole software. So what happened to me was I thought Studio One is crashing, which is not a very Studio One thing to do because uh, I was playing some notes and it was causing the software suite to crash in certain instruments, in certain vir virtual instruments. So obviously not this one. Um, maybe if we put up the CV5. See, it's pulling up this. Like there's there, different, different instruments had different issues, had different things they were pulling up when you were just hitting a key. So I'm like, this is not great. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna show you what I did to solve this problem. So I'm gonna go back to options, external devices. I'm again going to go to add, but I'm just gonna to go to, straight to new instrument, Arturia, KL Essentials, MK3. And again, receive from KL Essential 49 Mark III MIDI. I'm actually gonna change this to, and I'm going to do the same for send to, okay? So that seems to be working. Now let's turn on this instrument again. Let's go back to the 
DXV because we knew that this key, one of these keys, was toggling things on and off, but it's not anymore. Yeah, so now the keyboard works. And great, you, you might be done. In fact, like if you go to MIDI Learn, these might even be already like assignable. So to, I, I did something a little bit advanced there, but under the uh, virtual instrument, I just went to this tool settings icon. I went to MIDI and I clicked learn and then you just click on whatever you want and immediately move one of the faders. So you can assign it. So now I can control the keyboard that way. If that's not working, you might have to do the MIDI learn. So you would just double click on essentials you would click on MIDI learn and then you would literally just touch everything. And let me go ahead and make this window bigger so you can really see. So, <laughs> I've already touched these. Da, 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 da. I'm even gonna to touch this, these buttons in the middle here, that, touch all the buttons. These over here, undo, redo, stuff like that. Uh, transpose, octave, anything else, bank, that wheel. So you just touch everything. And uh, there we go. That is now <laughs> assignable to anything if it wasn't already working. And, and yours might have been, mine might have been. So again, that is under settings. Well, you open up the instrument, you go over there to settings and you go to MIDI Learn and just click on whatever. And now that's going to work. Oh, I, you, have to go, you have to navigate away from MIDI Learn before you, before you actually start playing with things. So there you go. That is how I successfully set up my Archeria Keylab Essentials um, Mark III MIDI controller with Studio One. Um, the Mackie control software trick didn't work for me. If it worked for you and you didn't have those problems or you solved them in another way, please let me know in the comments. I'm really curious. Um, if the way I did causes you problems, please let me know. I'm also curious. And if you are interested in seeing more content, I'm going to have more content. Obviously, this is something I do a lot. Um, but just like, comment, subscribe, get notifications, all that jazz. If there's anything in this video that you wanted, you can find pretty much everything in uh, the affiliate links for Sweetwater. It's a great way to support the channel doing things you were probably going to do anyway. So basically, that you click that link, you shop at Sweetwater, and I get a small portion of that sale shared with me. It doesn't cost you anything extra. We also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash get offset. If you, you know, want to join our Discord server, that's the only way to do so. Uh, have merch at getoffsetpodcast.com slash shop. And everybody out there, thanks for watching. Thanks for understanding. Until next time, my name is Emily. Goodbye.